Welcome to Lutopia, where we're building our own utopian homestead. Today I'm going to talk about how to put some ventilation in the shipping containers or the conixes. And we currently bought another one that is shorter that we're using just kind of as an outdoor kitchen. So it's going to have some food in it too. And the issue is we're down south in South Carolina with brutal UV sun. So the it could be 90 degrees outside and it'll be 130 inside of these conixes. Our goal is to basically get this thing to passively stay about the same temperature as it is outside. We feel that if we can keep everything about under 100 degrees at its maximum that all of our food will will be okay in there. Uh, obviously we're not going to put things like you know like chocolate or something that would melt in there but for the most part like staples like rice and pasta and stuff it should be just fine so we are trying to create a conics uh, that is cheap to do like as low cost as we can do because where you really get in trouble is trying to insulate it uh, spray foam insulation is crazy expensive and, and foam's gone up a lot so we decided to take the opposite approach and just ventilate it really well and since we're not like living in this thing uh, it should work. So if you wanted like a storage where you want it to be bearable to go in and out uh, But you're not worried about like living in it. This might be a good solution for you So we learned our lesson about getting a conics delivered and we made sure we graveled and leveled the area really good and had The stones in place. So this time the guy didn't get stuck uh, This delivery went a lot smoother and we didn't even have to level it. We nailed it Putting the stones out. We got really lucky so the problem is we got a 20 foot container and they're a little shorter and they're usually more beat up and this one is really beat up it's from 2004 i think and what's going on is you'll see that there's just a lot of rust on the outside and dents but this thing was about two thousand dollars which uh compared to last year this would have been 3500 they've come down a good bit in price and what happened is we had to actually, uh, the floors were just destroyed. Oh, here's my daughter painting right now. And we had to paint the walls inside because they I had to sand it and rust, get all the rust off. And then we used a Rust-Oleum silver reflective paint because I just think it looks cool. And uh, we're using exterior wood paint, this Valspar stuff on the floor. And this floor was so bad that there were huge gouges out of it and there had been some areas that were replaced. So there was a bunch of uneven spots. And so it took like $50 of wood putty just to fix this thing. And now we are sealing it with two coats of like pretty premium stuff. Got this Valspar here. And about this, we actually got the Duramax. And this is a mist tint. And if you don't know what a mist tint is, notice it says $50. Got this whole thing for $50. It's a $230 can of paint because somebody returned it to Home Depot because they didn't like the color. That's all that was wrong with it. They mixed it too dark. But we don't care about the color, so we took it and uh, we saved a fortune. I mean, it's like almost $200 off that. So we have really good paint. Uh, Zoe, you doing okay with this? Yeah. It's pretty easy to paint. Yeah. Yeah. Once you get the. Uh, Cracks filled in. We really had to go deep because uh, the wood was so torn up. It it really just almost feels like it needs the lotion. Like, you know, like this poor thing just needs some lotion. So I'm gonna take you through it. We're gonna show you how we ventilate it. It needs more than lotion. <laughs> uh, we'll also show you some ideas on keeping it cool. And I'm gonna show you some nanotechnology that you can put in the paint that reflects sunlight and will massively bring down the temperature of this. Otherwise it is like a uh, Vietnamese tiger cage in here. It's gonna cook. So if you decide you're gonna sand this, uh, say your conics got a lot of rust, the wire brushes work I think the best. This is a Porter cable and uh, I will give you a warning. You get about 10 minutes of battery before it's dead. So you need many batteries and many chargers to do this if it's really rusty. If you have power, since we're off grid, we don't really have a lot of power. I don't want to use it up, but some of the rust is really bad and I'll have to use a heavy duty one. And these will plug into our solar generators. Um, 
warning anything this heavy this is how people get really really hurt so you make sure you're strong enough to handle this and you know what you're doing this is a uh, big time wire brush but it works fast it's just heavy duty so to be gentler we're just using this and uh, even my daughter can control this these are I mean they're still dangerous but you know you just got to respect it and stand back while you while you sand I'm about to uh, finish with the roof here you'll see I already put some ventilation holes in the back and they're up high and what you do is where the Sun hits the most you put the ones up high and then when the Sun hits the least which is over here you put some holes in low and what happens is it will create a draft where it pulls the cold air in off the ground and pushes the hot air out up the top um, I drilled these out it's actually kind of a bear to drill out they're pretty tough but I'll show you this special uh, basically it's a hole cutter for metal that really helped and I'll link it on Amazon for you now I'm gonna be using this special bit that gets through thick. it says uh, for thick metal so we're gonna see how this works it should be the same size as the soffit if I ordered it correctly two inch yeah so I didn't really explain this well this has a drill that like a drill bit in the middle and that bit can actually be interchanged and you do that by unscrewing that so if the bit starts to come a little loose you need to sit back to where it's supposed to be and then screw it down and one of the bits are on this already broke I'm just going to be using a regular Porter cable 24 uh, 20 volt uh, drill if this is not powerful enough I might have to kick it up to a hammer drill but let's see if we can get through it with this so on the inside of the conics they'll look opposite you want to go for the ones that are pushed out and convex because those are actually concave on the other side so I'll mark it at 12 inches and you want to go right in the middle of this flat space because I'm using two inch uh, soffits and that'll be just about perfect for this you can't go any bigger than that because there's no more flat surface unless you want to do the door so these ridges are actually about oh maybe two and a half to two and three fourths so I'm gonna kick it over a little and do this at one and one fourth is what I'm looking at all right so since we're cutting up little metal shards I forgot uh, we should probably put eye safety on so but you can get an idea what it looks like. It punches a hole through. It's a pilot hole. And then uh, starts grinding the edges out. So I'm going to go put on some safety protection because I like my sight. So the sound is so loud in here. <laughs> I have to wear my chainsaw stuff. And the shards are really bad coming off. So I have safety goggles and this. And I'm actually using my chainsaw gloves. Uh, because this throws a lot of metal. Now that I'm through, I'm just going to use a half round file and knock off any spurs, but it did a really good job. So these are the soffit vents I'm using. Uh, these would normally go up under your roof, but what's nice about these is they're metal. They're louvered, so the rain kind of drips down, doesn't get in. And it's got a fine aluminum mesh in there to keep the little bugs out. So it looks like it fit pretty good, but there are some knobs on here that you kind of have to push past uh, I'll probably have to hammer it in and then glue it uh, we'll, we'll silicone it I mean but it's a pretty good fit just dry fitting like it's gonna fit and I think this is a great easy solution so first one's in fits pretty good I'm not gonna silicone it uh, until I finish you can get an idea what it looks like from the outside and there she is just make sure that the louvered stuff points down so the rain doesn't get in and I will pull them out a little bit put a silicone seal push it back down and really waterproof it so we're two holes in and I can definitely feel a cool breeze coming through it's working 
Um, I forgot to mention, if you're going to use this with a regular drill, it actually comes with a little Allen key and there's a little hole here that it goes in. So you can use that to tighten it because the bit does seem to come loose a good bit. This is what I'm using to put the uh, faucet vents on. So some silicone is supposed to have a 10 year mold free sealant. We'll see. Shrinking crap proof. Also, I think stuff like that would be for gutters would probably work well. We're going to put it around the rim and then just tap this thing in. Make sure the louvers are lined up the right way. We'll see how this goes. Oh, karate. And uh, maybe one more seal around it. I don't know. That looks pretty good, though. Yeah, I think it's good. So now I'm in the back side of the Conics. And when you get the shipping containers, they actually have four little vents in the corners. Um, they don't do a whole lot. But I am going to follow where they put it because I figure there's a good reason it's that height. So I'm just going to go out and put maybe four, three or four of these in. Also, I do have light bulbs finally hung up on strings. These are solar lights, but the actual... Uh, Battery's being charged right now out in the sun. I don't have it hooked up so it can stay inside and in charge. But hopefully someday soon. One thing at a time. I just got to cool this place off enough to work. Oh yeah, here's the little solar lamps that I'm using. Um, and then I just bring out the battery and charge it. I'd like to punch a hole through here one day. And set up a solar panel so it's just automatic. Anyway, I can link that in the description. By the way, I'll link all these tools in the description below. Affiliate link below. So the roof sanded. It took a long time. It's not as bad as the walls, but there was definitely a couple spots here. But as far as walking on the roof, they're pretty strong. You can't walk around on these. They, they kind of give a little, but... And I try to stay to the edges more. But I'm going to get up here today, sweep this off really good, blow it, and uh, get all the rust powder off. And then uh, going to paint it today with elastomer paint with nanoparticles. And I'll show you that, how that works. Something I forgot to mention is all the bad spots that were sanded. I hit them with a Rust-Oleum uh, cover. I use the enamel cover, the professional enamel. It seems to go on fast and dry fast. And this just seals all the rust. And then I'll paint this twice. And it should be good for years and years and years. So here's the secret weapon. It is what's known as high-tech covering. And what it is, is it is powder, like a ceramic powder that is ground down to like nano levels. And you can mix this in your paint and it can be in any color you want. And it will reflect up to 95% of the sunlight. So that dramatically reduces how much heat hits the building. It's basically like putting a mirror on the top of the conics. Um, I'll link this in Amazon if you want to check it out. It's not the cheapest stuff, but what is cool is you can mix it into any color you want. It doesn't have to be white. I'm just using the elastomer paint because I want to seal the roof uh, to make sure it's waterproof since there's some decent rust spots there. But we're going to mix it. It does say to use two coats for full completion. And what it is, is you mix in like a pint or, or four cups into a gallon of this powder. It took four days of sanding and about four days of painting. And it's done. And some of you are going to be like, why would you paint it brown? Because it's going to attract heat. It's actually got white elastomer on top. But I put those nano reflective nanoparticles in all the paint. And they reflect up to 95% of sunlight, and it does not matter what color you paint it. So you can actually have brown paint that reflects. It's pretty cool. I am going to put a lot more vents in. I put, I was trying to do like a cross breeze where you put vents down low where it's cooler and vents up high to try to create a cross breeze. But I'm not sure it worked that well in the last one I did. 
I think what I'm going to do instead is just put vents everywhere. Just have them all over the place to release the heat. So it's done. So we haven't really organized this or anything, but here's what the inside is going to look like. And we're going to make this into an outdoor kitchen, like kind of a storage of food and kitchen prep area, kind of place to wash vegetables and just keep stuff out of the pollen and dirt, some of the basic stuff. But we're not really going to wire this up with water or anything like that. We're probably just going to use a simple, uh, a, a simple bottle and pump system. But you get an idea of, so this is only a 20 by 8. It's not very big, but it should be enough. We figure if we have to during the real, real hot days, we can run some fans inside and blow them at the vents and hopefully keep it around, you know, a, a decent temperature. So this has only been up and running a month, but we've had a few days hit the 90s. And the good news is this seemed to work. You have to put up more ventilation holes than I expected, uh, but the good news is that reflective paint, man, it does its job. Also, it's kind of smart if you can put the Conix, put it in a shady area, that, that helps too, but if you can't, the reflective paint keeps it. So what I noticed is days like, say it's 85 degrees, it might be 87 in the Conix, or maybe, maybe even as high as 90, but there's really only about a five degree difference at the top of the day. That's amazing, considering that it used to be 130 in there. Uh, this is this is really, really good that it's passive. It doesn't even cost us anything. And on really hot days, like I said, you can uh, put some fans in there and, and just keep it under 100. But for what we're using it for, or if you're just using this thing to hold tools or you know something that's not going to really melt at 100 degrees or so, you'll be good. This will work well. And it was fairly inexpensive. It was just a lot of elbow grease because the shipping container we got was in such bad shape. If you can do better than we did, that would be great. The, the problem with shipping containers is they're hard to get now. They're kind of hard to get um, where you don't get a choice. They just show up with what they give you. And if you don't like it, they charge you a bunch of money to send it back. So it's kind of like a rip-off situation that they're like, you're going to take it and like it. Or, oh, yeah, we got to restock this thing for $1,000. Well, the thing only costs $2,000. So it's kind of a rip-off. Um, unfortunately... This time we rolled the dice, we did not get a good one. It was really beat up, and it took me way more days to fix this up than it should have. My first one we got was not in bad condition like that. It was maybe, you know, just a few days of work. So it's just a dice shoot. If you can buy one from somebody you know, you'd be way better off. So anyway, we hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please like and subscribe our channel. Also check out our Telegram group. There we post our exclusive videos and a lot of videos that YouTube censors and won't let us on. So we're over there for, for our other videos. If you have any questions, feel free to leave that or comments below. But it worked pretty good. This is not bad. You should try it.